guys, welcome back. So unfortunately, recently, I had another thrips breakout. Now, this sucks for me, but it was really helpful for actually being able to film the process of beneficial bugs doing what they do best, eating all the thrips. So this should be a video with some pretty satisfying footage of uh, thrips being eaten. So to anyone who's had some thrips, get ready. You'll love to watch this. Sometimes if I need a little pick me up, I'll just like refer back to this footage at this point now. It is just makes me sleep better at night. But this is also a really good opportunity to make a new video. Uh, I'd previously made one on my experience with beneficial bugs, but I'd only been using them for a while up at that point. Now I've certainly used them a whole bunch. So this seemed like the perfect opportunity to just do an updated video on beneficial bugs and predatory mites. I will link that first video down below for anyone who's interested, but uh, I should also really kind of cover all of that in this anyways. So me personally, I have had fungus gnats, I have had spider mites, and I have had thrips. Uh, so I have not had an opportunity to treat aphids or mealybugs using beneficial bugs. So I'll include some information about which bugs work for those pests, but I personally haven't tried it. I'm just going to give you my experience with my pests, my bugs, and uh, just some additional information. So number one, the biggest update I have from that previous video is when to use what. So a lot of people commented saying that they didn't have a great experience using beneficial bugs, that they weren't seeing them working as well. Um, sometimes they work better than others. And the reason for that is definitely humidity. So I have used beneficial bugs in varying humidity conditions, and they certainly do the best, last the longest in a high humidity setting where things are closed off, like a greenhouse or poor man's greenhouse, just a cheap, clear plastic tub. I've used beneficial bugs, predator mites in my living room on larger plants. It has worked, but not not like this does. Truthfully, putting them into an enclosed high humidity environment will yield the best results. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Beneficial bugs aren't like a chemical treatment. So anyone looking to avoid chemical treatments for insects, uh, beneficial bugs is an awesome option. But for anyone else with larger plants where they have an issue, truthfully, if you're okay with it, a neem oil, like a, some kind of an insecticidal soap, spray. I personally use Safer's Endol. I have it linked in my Amazon shop below, but the Safer's Endol works great. Uh, it's just you're going to have to be pretty persistent. One spray isn't going to clear an infestation. You're going to want to spray probably once a week for at least a few weeks just to be safe. So really quick, if I'm using a spray to treat pests on say a larger plant, like my palms that insist on getting spider mighty, I'll throw it in the shower, spray it down with some water, blast it with the safers, let it dry, put it back. A week later, I'll do the same thing. A week after that, same thing. And usually that works. Uh, key with sprays is to be more of a pain in the ass than the bugs are. So just persistency is key. So now back to beneficials. Now that we've sorted out what is a good way to use them if you've got your plastic tub or a greenhouse or a grow tent ready, you're prepared to use some beneficial bugs and have them work amazing. So which pests do you have is where you start because beneficial bugs, predator mites, there's a ton of different ones. You're going to want to pick the one that actually eats the pest you have. So in my case, I had thrips recently. So a good beneficial bug for that is Orias insidious. That is pirate beetles, and I love pirate beetles. Uh, so that is number one, they are like an army. They, do, they are not messing around. So Orias insidious, and then I also really like the predator mites, Cucumaris and Swirskii. Uh, they're really interchangeable in my opinion. They both work great, but the Orias insidious, in my opinion, is the best uh, because it does attack all life stages. So larva, pupae, adult, all of it. I believe the mites only attack the middle ages. So you're definitely getting everything with Orias, Insidious, or Pirate Beetles. 
So next pest is spider mites. I have treated spider mites in my grow tent using, and excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, but Pytocelius persimilis. I will be writing all this down below in the description box as well for anyone who's interested. But they're like a little orange mite. They worked phenomenally. They cleared up this spider mite infestation that took off while we were traveling amazingly well. It's definitely messy when you're using predator mites because you're just sprinkling their bran or whatever all over the place, but uh, worked incredibly well. And that one also attacks all life stages. Now, next, another pest that I said I would treated was fungus gnats. So I have treated fungus gnats using nematodes. And a lot of greenhouses carry nematodes like in like a little satchel even where you put it on the soil. But you can definitely get them online in store, uh, you pop them in the soil, and they are basically just a beneficial insect that's going to go through and eat the larva, I believe. So you're still gonna have to treat the adults uh, with like little stickies or something, but they work great too. Um, if you're looking to treat fungus gnats, another great way is using mosquito dunks in water. I have that linked also in my Amazon shop, but uh, that works phenomenally as well. Either treatment method works great, and honestly, since using kind of both for a few months, uh, I have not had fungus gnats in like two and a half years, you guys. Like I, every time I see those posts come up where it's like, if you don't have fungus gnats, you're lying. I'm, I don't have fungus gnats. It's the best. Those little bugs are just such a pain. So uh, this worked amazing and just kept them away for years. Now, two more common pests I wanted to go over that I personally haven't treated, uh, but I do have what the treatment beneficials would be. So number one is mealybugs and uh, lace wings are supposedly the best treatment for mealybugs. Same thing, they're quite a large beneficial insect. Um, you won't really see a pirate beetle. They are really tiny, but I believe a lace wing is even bigger than a like ladybug or a lady beetle. So you're probably gonna wanna have them contained just so that they're not like venturing around your home because if it can fly, it will. So uh, would recommend containing those to a enclosed space. Again, plastic tub. If you don't, if you don't wanna invest in some kind of an expensive setup, no worries. A plastic clear tub next to a window works great. Or if you don't have it next to a window, a little grow light on top, perfect, you're set. And the final common pest that I wanted to go over is aphids. So you can also treat these with Orias insidious or pirate beetles. So if you happen to have like a multiple bug infestation, perfect. The pirate beetles will clear you right up. And of course, for aphids, ladybugs or lady beetles also work. Um, I just personally find that ladybugs like seem to go everywhere but where they need to be in a home. Like whenever I've released them, they seem to be all over the windows and then they die there. But Orias insidious really does flock right to the pest and I don't find them all over my home. And they're also way tinier. So uh, just personal preference, I do prefer pirate beetles. So now that we have figured out what we need bug wise in order to treat our plants, I wanted to talk about how to actually release these bugs. So when you get them, number one most important thing, take a look at them. Like look at your bottle, look at the grains. You should be able to see some mites or some beetles. Like if you ordered pirate beetles, you will be able to see the beetles crawling around. So make sure that what you've got is alive. That's very important. Um, I've certainly got orders that have not been alive. I won't name the company. It's not the one I'm gonna recommend below. Um, for Canadians, I'll be recommending a company below, but definitely check before you pop them in with your plants. Mites are super small. You can still see them, but you're really gonna have to like hold a magnifying glass or some cool glasses like this. I'm also linked down in the bio to really make sure that those are alive before you release them. And next part, release them as soon as you get them. Don't wait because they do need to eat drink, live. So keeping them in a bag, keeping them in a box for multiple days before releasing them is not a good idea. I either release them the second I get them or like the next morning. Like I'm releasing them as fast as I possibly can. Basically, the sooner you release them, the more will still be alive. The longer you wait, 
the more will die. And you paid for all of them, so you might as well use all of them. Now next, in order to properly release these, if you are releasing mites, so predator mites, hookamaris, uh, swirsky eyes, the one that I can't pronounce for spider mites, persimilis, you're gonna wanna sprinkle those onto the leaves. So uh, it will look messy. Um, some of them actually come in hang tags. That's helpful, you just hang it near a leaf. But rather than just putting them around the plants, the best way to get those mites up on those leaves is to just start them there. So when I'm sprinkling the predator mites on, I'll put the brand stuff they come on all over the tops of the leaves. They can crawl, but uh, they can't like fly up there or anything. So it's just helpful. Why not give them the upper hand, let them start eating right away. As for pirate beetles, the Orias insidious or lace wings or lady beetles, they can fly, they can get where they wanna get. So I start them in the soil. So when I'm going around with my pirate beetles, I'm just basically shaking some of them from the bottle into the pots of the soil. And they will find their way around. They motor like crazy, so they'll be just fine. Um, one other thing I do, and I don't know if this is actually helpful, but I imagine they need to drink. So I'll go in and put some little drops of water on leaves that will hold a little water droplet. <laughs> I don't know if it helps, but I feel like I'm contributing and helping keep my cute little bugs alive. Now, in some of these videos that I'll be kind of playing over here while I'm talking, these bugs go in and really eat these pests fast. They clear out everything. But if you have had pests before, you know why they're called pests. They are a pest. They come back. So if you bring in your beneficials and they clear everything out, but it's thrips, I promise you in a few weeks, you will have another wave of thrips. So the best way, in my opinion, to fix thrips, uh, if you have a large infestation where you have, you can see all those little white larvae and the odd little adult, go in with your Arias insidious, clear everything out. They will wipe clean the whole space. Every plant in there with your 500 or whatever they come with, it'll be clean. Then a week or two later, order yourself some of the predator mites and release those on delay. Then everything that's starting to kind of rehatch, those little, you're starting to see the odd little baby thrip around, this, those mites will clear you out again. Spider mites, I found that one and done seem to work for spider mites. But for anyone who's had something like thrips, you know, uh, like months later, months later, you won't have seen a thrip forever. And suddenly you'll have a new infestation. Like where do they even come from? I have no idea. Um, personally, myself, I the Monstera I had cut up, I had put cuttings over in a dark corner very far from any other plants in March. And around September, I walked by those cuttings and was like, wait a second, is that? And it was, it, I, it was like six months later, I had a whole new infestation of thrips on these cuttings that like, it was just ridiculous. So with something that has long delays in uh, hatching like thrips, just be vigilant, always keep an eye. Whenever you go to water plants, just do a quick once over, remove damaged leaves when you can, and just make sure that you are never seeing any of those little thrip larvae. The second you are, you wanna treat. So personally, myself, to keep pests at a minimum, I actually use a bunch of different pest control methods. So I use beneficials all the time. I find that then I don't even have to think about it. And it's low effort, especially in somewhere like a greenhouse where I have tons of plants. They're all pretty expensive. They're all my favorites. So uh, I am more than happy to not have to haul them back and forth to spray when I've got so many. Uh, beneficials are so much easier in a space like this. But if I have a larger plant downstairs or a single plant uh, with a problem, spraying works really great. Like I'm not gonna knock spraying. So uh, a few times a year, I personally will do a little Safer's End All spray. I'll pop a bunch of plants into the tub, spray them down with the shower, and then spray them with the Safer's End All. And it works awesome. It keeps bugs away just a few times a year. Works amazing. Um, final note, actually, on using the sprays. Make sure 
that you are not spraying and then immediately releasing beneficials. If you have sprayed in like the last few weeks to a month, I would recommend washing your plants off in the shower before you put beneficials on them. Uh, beneficials will also be killed by your Dr. Doom, your Safer Zendal. So uh, definitely make sure that you're giving a good amount of time between those two things. And final, final, final note. Uh, I live in Canada, so I am not able to use systemic insecticides. But to my understanding, other countries do have systemics. I do not know how they affect your predator mites, beneficial bugs. I'm not sure, just since I unfortunately cannot get my hands on them. But I've heard that they work amazing for helping keep bad bugs at bay anyways, so maybe then you wouldn't need beneficial bugs. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I will leave all the information down below. Uh, anything I mentioned, the Safer's End All, the, I think the nematodes, the mosquito dunks, all of that will be linked in the Amazon link down below. And I have Amazon set up for Canada and the USA. If you have any other questions, definitely feel free to leave them down below. I hope you enjoyed all my footage of the beneficial bugs being eaten. Here's my favorite picture of a pirate beetle and a mite fighting over a thrip. It was beautiful to watch. I stayed up till around two in the morning. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Bye, you guys.